Hello and welcome to Inside Music, episode number 172. As always, I'm your host, James Shotwell, and it's great to be with you again. We are officially on Spotify, so this is kind of a celebratory episode. The podcast has been waiting a long time for this opportunity, and the platform finally made the tools available to us to get the show on there. So if you're listening to this right now on any other service, feel free to head over to Spotify and follow along there. I'm sure you already consume most of your audio content there, so you might as well add Inside Music to the mix. Today, Today's episode features three members of the band Fit for a King, who are currently on tour, a headlining tour in fact, for their 2018 album Dark Skies. I caught the band when they were in Grand Rapids, Michigan, performing at Elevation, part of the Intersection Music venue last week, and we had a fun time. Again, it's a little bit of a strange conversation because I have three members of the band with me, both Ryan's and Jared, and we had a chat about really a lot of things. We talked about Saves the Day, who, as many of you know, was recently on the show and played the same venue where Fit for a King was at, as well as the reception to their record and what it takes to make some of the music videos. Because if you've never seen a Fit for a King video, they go all out. There is high production value. Their most recent one for the song When Everything Means Nothing finds the band getting soaked by water, and it was an arduous shoot, as you will hear in this conversation. We also talk about what the future holds for the group. Fit for a King is one of those rare bands that is caught on with the alternative slash metal slash hardcore community in such a way that kids are just fervently following their every move. If you go to a show that features anyone in the alternative genre, you're bound to see a Fit for a King t-shirt. And the group talks a little bit about how they've been able to harvest this community and what they're doing with it moving forward. If you were unable to catch Fit for a King on their current tour, they will be going out in Europe with As I Lay Dying in a couple of weeks. And after that, they'll be back in the States as direct support for Ice Nine Kills on their fall headlining tour. Before we get to the conversation, I do need to tell you a few quick things. First and foremost, this episode of Inside Music and all episodes of Inside Music are brought to you by Holix, the industry standard for digital promotion. And what that means is that Holix works with people like Metallica, Blink-182, Chance the Rapper, and thousands of other artists, including many independent acts, to promote their music discreetly online. To have your chance to do the same, go over to holix.com today and start a free trial. That's holix.com, H-A-U. Lix.com. I also want to encourage you to find us on YouTube. Every episode of Inside Music is on YouTube, as well as educational videos and breakdowns of weekly headlines from the music industry. Just go to YouTube and search Music Biz 101. That's Music B-I-Z 101. You'll probably see my face or something that I've led on there. So please subscribe to our channel today and join that community because it's growing fast and we want you to be a part of it. And finally, if you have yet to check out Fit for a King's album, Dark Skies, I highly recommend you do so. This band is doing something incredibly unique in the world of heavy music, and I think that they are only going to get bigger in the years ahead. So again, check out Dark Skies, see the band live, and yeah, just give them a chance. I think you're going to enjoy it. But for right now, sit back, relax, and enjoy my conversation with Fit for a King. Where'd you guys come from? Iowa City. Iowa City, yeah. Oof. Okay. Okay. It got really bumpy, no offense, getting into Michigan, I feel like. No, it's it's ironic that the birth of the car is like the worst roads. <laughs> that is ironic. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it, it's hell no matter where you go, it's mm-hmm. fine. It's like a, it's like a running joke because there's a, there's this city somewhere else in America that put fake potholes, like a 3D potholes in the ground to like make people slow down and in Michigan it just looks like that like that's just like what our roads are like in <laughs> yeah, actual I will say I live in the northeast it's quite terrible so I used to live in Boston so I can relate to that okay. a little bit yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah my, my fiance went to college in Beverly okay all right that's like a nice part of Massachusetts yeah, <laughs> coastal. It's yeah, yeah. Boston. yeah it's the people are still uh, I love the New England because everyone just speaks their mind like, oh like, yeah, we sure do. There's no, there's no like, there's no um, Midwest nice that's out there. That's what a lot of the baseball and basketball players have said. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's I mean, true. true. Hey, I'm, I, yeah, at least I'm from New York. I like to think that we're a little less racist than Boston. Yeah, slightly <laughs> less racist. Yes. Supposedly Boston is extremely racist. When the other day I had a Southern gentleman at Waffle House. 
Falls of all places. He was like, yeah, I heard people from New Yorkers hate all of us down here. I was like, no, we do not. We hate <laughs> everyone equally. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is an, an equal opportunity hatership all around the country. <laughs> I, I just feel like in in uh, the Northeast, like the ther- therapy of like being angry is just people just let it out all the time. Like if they're upset with you, you're gonna hear about it. And like I lived in uh, Minneapolis for a while, and everyone there has that weird Midwest nice thing where they're just kind of like, yeah. "Oh, it's okay that you hit my. It's fine. Like who cares that you hit my car? It's totally okay." And they go home and beat their kid. About <laughs> <it>. <laughs> yes, but they die at like 43 from a heart attack. Yeah, they've just put that much stress on their body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, how was Iowa City? It was good. It's cool. It's great. They, they, always, crazy. they always treat us well. I feel like in places like Iowa City, that it's like there's nothing else to do, so shows get like more energy because people are like, finally, something to yeah. break the monotony. Mm-hmm. Well, schools out of session too right now, so for a city like that, it's affected slightly just because it is a definitely a college town. Yeah. Um, but the show was still great last night. It was a really fun time. Yeah. You we get- actually asked the crowd, we're like, who's from Iowa City? And like, Six people raised their <laughs> and the rest of the crowd said so they drove over an hour. Yeah, because anything there is over an hour away. Yeah. <laughs> Even when I lived in Minneapolis, if you didn't, if you wanted to go to a show anywhere else, there's like minimum four hour commitment. It's like mm-hmm. going to Des Moines. At least Minneapolis gets a decent amount. Yeah, L- yeah, yeah. Thankfully, um, it's it's like the compromise for the terrible winters of the great yeah. music scene. Um, well, you guys seem like you're in good spirits for being almost a month into this. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I think that we have gotten better at just doing this, I okay. would say. Knowing yeah. how to control, I guess, energy, control like uh, our relationships. Because if you travel with anyone for a month long, you're going to maybe get some mm-hmm. high tensions going on. But I think we've gotten better at that over the years. Has the, the silent rides become less and less? Well, that's why I refer to like when bands have fights on tours, like the silent, the pain of the silent ride. We don't really. We don't really I don't think we've ever had yeah. like a silent ride. Oh no. wow! I can Beautiful. think of a few times where, to reference earlier, <laughs> I blow up, <laughs> I yell at people. It's happened like five times. <laughs> that's good. But and that's over five years. I say yeah, uh, batting average but then wise. People, everyone's totally. over it, and like. Yeah, we're, well, it's, the, it's part of the thing, too, where it's like you do air out your laundry so quick, and then you're just like, all right, like, we straight? We good? We're going to, like, not do that again? Yeah, like, we're cool. going to be in the uh, next city in, like, an hour, so yeah. let's pull, this shit um, pull yeah. it all together. I think just yeah. with the time of we've toured a lot, mm-hmm. we've spent a lot of time together. Yeah. We're old. We're <laughs> older. We're not 21, and, like, it's not like we're, like, blackout drunk every night and then like trying to perform and like trying to like keep up with crazy antics like Mm -hmm. we're a very simple group of people where it's like right now our kick is watching a show called the boys and bachelor in paradise i've been watching the boys at home myself yeah uh you know just have a beer hang out watch a show with your friends go Mm -hmm. to bed we did three warps to get three warp tours together in a van so i think we can uh, through anything <laughs> after that. Mm-hmm. I agree. Did you actually have AC in the van all three tours? Yes. We did, basically didn't turn the van off the entire time. <laughs> that's, that's the trick, right? Yeah, just yeah, keep yeah. it cool. <laughs> I, uh, I've tour man- I did a tour managing run on Warp Tour in a van, and it was fun. It's memorable. Yeah. It, like, it's like real cutting your teeth stuff. If you can survive trip. the South during Warp Tour, Florida, yeah. Arizona. Yeah, and yeah. All. yeah. It's yeah, like we're starting place. to crack a little in Arizona. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> yeah. I, I have trouble in the heat. And then, because you're in the van, we're out, you know, we push ourselves a bit. We're outside lifting weights all day and, mm-hmm. you know, like keeping active, hanging out with people, running around. You walk eight miles a day. And, yeah, I definitely lose it. Hit the wall. <laughs> it's also seven weeks of shows. It just yeah. becomes a bit much. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, well, it seems like things are going to real. I was thinking about how often you guys tour because you were just here not that long ago. It was back in November. Yeah, uh, November. November yeah. yeah, early with December, November. Devil I was Prada. Prada. Yeah, the Devil Wears Prada. Oh, we were tour. here on the Dangerous Tour. Yeah, All oh, right, upstairs, upstairs. upstairs intersection. Yeah. See, it's it happens so often that we're both that we're all like, months. I don't know, last time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> last time we were here, there's there's obviously three uh, stages within yeah. this building. There's four now. Four now. There's the Mint, yeah. I it only that. has 110 people capacity though. That's, so. gotcha. That's great for local cool. shows. Yeah, yeah it's fantastic. We'd always seen the biggest one yeah. intersection. Never played it over how many years. Finally played it, yeah, on this last time we were here with August Burns Red. 
Oh yeah, cool. I was at that show too. I can't believe. Yeah, yeah I, the Devil Wears Prada one's the one that kept in my mind. But I was, that's why I, I've been trying to sit down with you guys for a while now. And every time it's like, well, it's a great show. I saw it, and then we never get to connect. So today I was like, one thirty, I'll take it. There's nothing else happening at one thirty. There's no interruptions possible. That's true. <laughs> no sound even happens till like two or two thirty. Truth. So that's truth. nice. But yeah, I, I, I talked with uh, Chris from Saves the Day in here a couple of days ago during the Joyce Manor sound check, and it was like, yeah, so anyways, you know, <laughs> it was just like that, yeah, yeah, screaming over a Joyce Manor song, so the whole, like, recording is just, like, a weird commentary track to Joyce Manor's music. <laughs> Talk, were you on the Saves the Day train? Back Big Saves the Day fan. Through Being Cool is definitely one of my intro in Reverie is, like, big, like, coming into, like, grown-up emo <laughs> record. Yes. Um, but yeah, because they were one of the biggest East Coast bands at that time, and I think everyone liked Through Being Cool when it came out. If you didn't, you were a loser. <laughs> 20 so, years ago this year. Yeah, it's wild. Start dating it's ourselves. It's sad yeah. to think that I'm that old. <laughs> <laughs> Chris feels the same way. <laughs> yeah, but you know, he's one of the few that, like, you, we did Warp Tour four, 14 or 15 they played. And he was one of, maybe it was seven, one year they <laughs> Jesus. Um, but he was one of the few where I, I like saw him talking to my friend and I was just like, holy shit. <laughs> Here we are. You're Chris Conley. Like, <laughs> you're the lord of, of all that is emo. Now, yeah. I always wonder what Saves Day would have been like had that guitar player stayed in the band and Chris stayed the vocalist. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm pass through being cool where I do love all the other records I always love since the newest one's a little, little weird it's a little weird um, it's a little weird yeah but great band great band I had that same effect sitting across from him because I met him several times for short things but we spent like 45 minutes together and I was just like I don't I feel like I'm not able to talk to you because I've looked up to you for so long it's one of those things where you're like how do you have this much time for me <laughs> yeah I think there's few people that accomplish something like Chris did where it's like not only did you put out like a timeless album but you were essentially the centerpiece of the movement you were the first yeah. band to combine the riff <laughs> with these high pitched emo vocals mm-hmm. upbeat punk songs all about high school rhetoric yeah it was amazing they ripped through 25 songs in an hour. It Did was... you see them with this hardcore? No. <laughs> see, that's I watched the set of that, and it was insane. Yeah, it was so crazy. Cool. It was yeah. great. Um, I want to, not to, this is going to be an awkward transition, but I do love the latest video. And every I, I showed it to my girlfriend today, and this morning when we were sitting around the house, she works at, uh, at the other venue up the street, 20 in a row. And the first thing she says is, that looks like hell. Just like the idea of shooting a video in the in that much water all the time. Oh, it was genuinely <laughs> the worst video. I've ever. Like it seems like a cool so concept, and then you time. get to like on set, and I imagine yeah. you're like, oh, I didn't. Think what was about. awkward is like the last two videos. One was like fire. And yeah. Was, the most recent one was water, but we recorded the fire video in the summer, and then the water one in the winter. Kind of like got <laughs> this. I think forty five degrees out. And the water thing happened. <laughs> yeah, and I. I'm a smoker, so the second I got hit with the cold water, I couldn't, I started just hyperventilating, like, yo, I can't breathe. Mm -hmm. And we all just were prepared, like, standing there with towels and stuff, where it was like, the second you got off with towel, we'll push you into the shower. (laughs) Yeah, we were helping each other out. Yeah. (laughs) When he would get out, we'd, like, throw a towel on him. Jared had it the worst, because they started filming, had less water than they thought. Right. And it's like, so like, yeah, you have to wait. We have to refill the tank. <laughs> I'm just sitting there. It took like an hour <laughs> to refill the tank because we're in the middle of nowhere. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was a challenge. I've never had like an issue like that where I was like, my body really doesn't want to respond here. Like, I really can't. <laughs> Yeah, luckily the video came out as cool as it did because I was just dying. At first you're like, I can do this, then your clothes get soaked, and then you're like, I can't do this. You're like, ah, <laughs> how long could it take? And it was like, oh yeah, videos mm-hmm. take a while. <laughs> and playing in front of a tornado is really hard. <laughs> yeah, that was easier than the uh, And you water. think to yourself, too, like, three minutes, I just gotta do, like, a playthrough of the song, go full out, rock out, and that's water, right? <laughs> the the director that we've been working with, uh, same guy who's done the past five or six videos with our band. Uh, the first video he did was Dead Memory. It was in like a studio, air conditioning, mm-hmm. obviously climate controlled. He brought us Chick Fil A and coffee and stuff. <laughs> and Comfortable. Video has progressively gotten more and more difficult, more mm-hmm. elements. Mm-hmm. Not inside. You know what I mean? 
you're doing the Tom Cruise approach to things where you're getting more and more difficult. Like how how <laughs> close can we push ourselves to dying each yeah, time? Yeah. <laughs> the funny is the tornado scene since it was all green screen. That was the easiest thing to shoot, and it looks way cooler than everything else in the video. Yeah. It looks very <laughs> cinematic. It's a great yeah. shot. Yeah. But the, you know, even anytime I see a video that requires fire, but especially water, I'm always like, that just seems like a long day or a long couple of days. Oh, yeah. yeah, the fire one was fun too, though. I mean, the where we shoot the only bad part about So, where'd you shoot the fire one? We shoot them both in the same place. Okay. There's a place in Davisboro, uh, Georgia. And this gentleman, David, he runs a, not a group home, but it is a, essentially a rehab facility for young men who are learn, looking to learn a trade and create sober living. Okay. Um, and David will teach you how to be an electrician or teach you how to be a carpenter, all this all this stuff. And this he has everything. He is <laughs> absolutely <laughs> bonkers. I mean, that giant F, he cut that out of steel. It's perfect. And then, you know, draped it, made, yeah. made the winch to raise it up. Has But he teaches all these kids how to work on it. Like a Silent Planet video, he created this rotating room that's on a forklift and it Amazing. And like, he just takes it to the extreme because he loves us and he loves what he's doing. And he loves his kids. So, um, we have the best time out there. We just ride four wheelers and like, hang out and just. He has good food and he has a lovely family. So we have a really enjoyable time shooting the videos. But just that instance, the fire one was pretty damn fun. I had a good time. The bugs are the only thing. He, he bugs were big deal. Yeah, it was hot, but it, yeah, the, the bugs were so attracted to the lighting that we had on the stage. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like getting in you could actually out while you were playing. <laughs> yeah, the bar lights that were like on the ground, you could pick it up, and the bugs would just slide. Oh, it. it was quite disgusting. That's uh, what a commitment to the craft. <laughs> <laughs> what turned out cool? It was worth it. No, it looks it looks very cool, and so does the latest video. I think that. It, um, you know, I'm, I'm not always a fan of the performance videos, but you guys have found this great balance between narrative and like genuinely engaging visuals that I think mm-hmm. keep makes keeps it interesting. Thank you. What element do we have to do next? Electricity. That <laughs> electricity. <laughs> we have to do it. Electricity. We have to do ice. <laughs> ice. Yeah, the winter one's coming. Yeah. Dude, not, yeah, yeah, like under a swan video. Yeah, yeah, snow. where they're in the snow the whole time. Let's yeah. Yeah. do that. I could do that. Great. I love this <laughs> I could be out in the snow for hours. Well, no you will problem. be. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think, you know, I think electricity could be fun. It could be like a mad scientist kind of theme to it. Really electrocute for it. me for a part of the... Yeah. <laughs> I'll be the mad scientist. Yeah. I'll electrocute you. Yeah, you have the hair to get it all standing <laughs> out like, and blowing out. Dude, and I'll grow out just the sides of my hair. <laughs> yes. It's very <laughs> Igor-ish <laughs> kind of cool. <laughs> Good. Good. I'll just be frank from It's Always Sunny. <laughs> I should do that for Halloween. Oh my gosh, yeah, perfect. You have a crack now. Be perfect. So you, you should rock under the ham. <laughs> and a bottle of rum. Yes. <laughs> you won't be able to do much else. You'll just be like, can you hold these things? Well, that's why I was honey boo boo for Halloween once, the year before I joined the band. And uh, yeah, I did. I wore like a pink um, flannel, like tied up crop top, pushed my belly out, had a Mountain Dew with just a bunch of Mountain Dew and liquor in it. And uh, I just had a big blonde wig on, and I got very belligerent. <laughs> that was it. fun. I won a lot of beer pong that night, though. So that was cool. So when this tour wraps up, how are you guys just home until the the Ice Nine tour that just got announced? Or what do you have in We're tour? going to Europe. Europe. We're going to Europe with As I Lay Dying. Fun. Chelsea Grin and Unearth. Okay. We're open that. It's going to be awesome. We've never done uh, a huge Europe tour before. Any, well, that's going to probably be the biggest tour we've ever done. Yeah. Ever. They seem yeah. to really love heavy right now, so it's like a good time to go to Europe. Yeah. Well, I yeah. like Dying just came back a year ish ago. Yeah. They're playing some crazy rooms. Massive like rooms. Yeah, they're selling like crazy. <laughs> the average in or the the range in general for that tour is three to eight thousand cap Lord. Uh, yeah. facilities and you know, they're going pretty wild with You're the gonna bring pyro yeah. and all this stuff. Europe gets know. all the pyro every yeah. <laughs> yes. Well they they rock for the metal, man. I mean yeah. it's crazy. There are bands. The Germans love metal. Yeah, there, yeah. Are, there are metal hardcore bands from the states that can't draw 150 kids, but go over there and draw a thousand. Mm-hmm. It's wild. The way that they appreciate and love the riff is, you know, kind of unlike anyone else. Where 
Germans can almost make or break <laughs> your career, your European career. It's strange, yeah. I, uh, I have friends that went over there to see Parkway because Parkway sets the whole stage on fire and the drums mm-hmm. get spinning and stuff. And then they come here and it's like, a really cool light show. Yeah, <laughs> and you're like, massive difference. Like, just watch, no, just go on their Instagram. It's cool. You can still get the full effect. Or... I would love to tour with Parkway Drive. <laughs> That'd be massive. <sighs> That's probably my favorite band. <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't know why. I just always... They hit that spot. I think the new record's really good. Yeah, they, they challenge yeah. you just enough with each record. We saw them recently, and it was really cool to see their um, coming into, like, well, we, we want to make a, you know, a different style of metal because we're, yeah. you know, obviously growing, but they don't want to sell out. Mm-hmm. They found a really good way to make Winston just eerie and badass. Like, yeah, I think that it's super mm-hmm. cool. Like I could see them on a Marilyn Manson tour, or I could see them on a tour with like a Rise Against. Like exactly. they just are that perfect bridge of metal, mm-hmm. where they can do just about anything. I saw them co-headline with the uh, Kill Switch, and it was just like the perfect double bill with uh, After yeah. the Burial in there. It was just. Oof. <laughs> see, we put a festival with all those bands. So yeah. it was at the end of that tour. Mm-hmm. Did yeah. you watch Bane? Yeah. You don't like it. Oh, I love it. I think it's great. I think what I'm amazed at how much the popularity of Bane is bringing back that whole like subgenre of metal. Yeah. Right? Well, they're yeah they're <laughs> one of those like in that knocked loose quick. Yeah. But they're an amazing band. I love it. that record. Arizona is so good because it bring if you are, it's new kids are hearing it and they've never heard stuff like that so their mind is blown and then mm-hmm. people like me are hearing it and going, what more Glass Jaw Dillinger esque. Like, awesome chaos with a little bit of Converge mixed in? Cool. Mm-hmm. Like, that sounds amazing to me. Yeah. And it's one of my favorite records. And, like, kids are actually buying the records, which is the most amazing thing to me. Oh, yeah, they could put out eight variants and yeah. kids will buy it all. That Knock Loose, I was just in L.A. doing meetings at Labels, and I talked to the Pure Noise people, and there are 11 variants of that Knock Loose album that's coming out, and they've sold already sold, like, 6,000 copies on vinyl alone. And I was like, geez, geez. kids love this record. Yeah. Yeah, well, they like, they, they do band. it extremely well. They yeah. release their variants extremely well-timed. Like, I follow a few, like, metal hardcore collectors thing on like Facebook and whatnot and you mm-hmm. see the kids all bug out but when you only put out 150 of this color 300 yeah. of this color like as long as it's not I think they put out one variant that was a thousand variant <laughs> yeah and that was like the generic basic um, but it's just being smart like it's a commodity right like mm-hmm. you're uh, yeah. you're something that people want to collect whether it's merchandise or a vinyl I mean the difference is ten dollars so it doesn't, right. it's not really, if some kids bought 10 shirts of yours, it's not that crazy for them to buy, like, 10 records. One one of our super fans who's just one of the biggest music fans we know is dude, Norberto Pena. You know his name. That's how I know he's such a super fan. Like you got Oh, but he's, he's like my friend now. Like, I, <laughs> I care about him for sure. Um, but he's bought everything from, like, a mask from our first music video to all sorts of stuff. But I've gone to his house. Boy's vinyl collection is wild. Like, he has, like, every state champs vinyl put out like he has all of our vinyl he has every knocked vinyl he has every like pacific vinyl he has just his bands that he likes he dives into so hard and it's it's really amazing to see what some people are capable of with their collection well i feel like you guys are one of those bands that has that kind of audience because i have yet to meet a fan of your band that isn't like all the way in it's not like oh i, I dig that band it's always like i freaking love <laughs> fit for a king and i'm like cool that's like how i first found out about you guys it was more about there are just certain bands, I think, that you go to enough shows, you start seeing their shirts all the time, yeah. or their merch, and you're always mm-hmm. just like, what is happening? Why does everyone suddenly have this band's merch? <laughs> they, like, they weren't in the area recently, so kids are traveling to see the show. And that was something that happened with me and your band, was that I just found myself being like, all right, I gotta, I'm, I'm going to give in, because these people have beat me into submission with like brand exposure to Fit for a King. Mm-hmm. And then you guys happened to play here like three times in the last year, which has helped be like, okay, yeah. I, got, I got it now. <laughs> you seem to never be off the road. Little break. <laughs> it was just the newest record, man. Like, I think we've always been a slow grind band. This record was the first taste of like, Oh, I think we kind of like got this one right. Uh, so, <laughs> like all that forward momentum started to yeah, pay off. You know, and it, oh, yeah. it's not like we did a lot different from any past record mm-hmm. other than I think we found our our perfect person to work with and he really helped make our songs what they can be and kind of, I don't know, he brought us together the best where our band hadn't ever just, we worked on individual parts 
we weren't really like a whole entity mm. where now everything isn't about the individual it's about the, the outcome and I think that that really just made a masterful change for us so we'll see how it goes next time <laughs> January, January 2020 we start round two so you guys are basically on the road until January it seems uh, like yeah. yeah we have December off that's about it yeah, <laughs> 10 days off but like you that guys year. that tour goes almost like right up until December and then <laughs> December happens. Well, yeah. the, the past, what, several years, we've played shows until, like... Almost Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, almost, almost Christmas. So this is nice to have a break almost all of December. <laughs> so when, when you guys actually do get off the road, do you live in the same area? Do you actually hang out? Or is it like, get away from me, I need, like, five minutes to myself now that we're off the road? It's not intentional. I don't, I don't, think, it's, I don't think it's intentional. You see everyone, you see, like, family and friends, and then you're like, so you guys want to hang out again? Or? You want to see some yeah. of your other friends on the, <laughs> on the road, or, like, that's, that's I, the hardest see my wife. That's the hardest part about hardest part about traveling is uh, just keeping up with relationships. Yeah. You know, obviously, we're with you so, each other so often. We're constantly having to sharpen our relationships. Just like mm-hmm. I mentioned earlier, like we know how to ha- handle each other when we've been in the same confined space for so long. But yeah. when you get home, you want to see those friends that still care about you and still like pour into you, but you just don't see them until you're home. So you, yeah, it's not it's not intentional that we don't hang out. When we're <laughs> Ryan, Ryan and Dan are married. I'm engaged. Jared's really hot. <laughs> so we're all busy. So Keeps it's busy, one yeah. of those where we, that's our main focus. And then, like, I got like, my best friend I go to the gym with every day and stuff like that. Um, we just, like, we communicate a lot. But, yeah, it's, it's not like we're home for six months and I haven't seen him. It's like, mm-hmm. I cannot see you guys for a month and a half. That's fine. But, <laughs> yeah, well, plus, he lives in New York, and Ryan and I live in uh Fort Worth, Texas. Well, yeah, Daniel lives in Los, yeah, Los Angeles. So we're a little spread out. But yeah. None of our crew is from Texas anymore either. Well, Arizona <laughs> and Iowa yeah. and California. Or no, is Andrew living in Cali or Texas? He lives he's in Texas now. He's in Texas right now, but he lives eight hours. So. Yeah. Might as well be in another state. Yeah. At eight so hours. Own, Texas is its own country. It, yeah, absolutely. It's the best country in America. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone should go at least once. That's what I always say. Balanced country in America. <laughs> I was, Texas is on a state I tell everyone that they should visit at least once. Mm-hmm. That, not all states make that list. Okay. There's, there are some yeah. that you could probably skip, and you're like, it's fine. It's, yeah. it's a state, unless like you have North a reason. North Dakota. I can honestly say I've never seen a fan of ours say, come play North Dakota. <laughs> yeah. I've never... Uh, and I imagine it's pretty flat up there, so you're not missing out. Hey, and there can it be flatter spots. than South Dakota? <laughs> you'd, you'd think to forget about, like, for instance... On Monday, we played Arkansas, mm. and initially, you're like looking at it around, you're like, Arkansas on a Monday. Especially when school's out. And Dude, yeah. it was wild. We <laughs> had like over 400 kids, and they just went ham, and we were like, what the hell is this? Like, okay, guys, like, we may need to come back. Like, and that's, it's cool to see that kind of thing, too, where it's maybe a state you don't necessarily, or city you don't necessarily think about as much. But then you haven't been in two years, and it just crushes. You're so happy. So, so with this forward momentum you guys have going, is it? Uh, do you, are you people? Are you writing stuff on the road for new material, or is you just riding the wave right now of like playing shows every day? You- Since Bob, our other guitarist, he doesn't tour with us anymore. He stays at home. Okay. So he does a lot of writing at home, and you just get an email in the middle of the night with like, "Here's a riff." Yeah. Not well, even this time. He's like storing up a bunch of stuff <laughs> we, he doesn't like showing everything he does so he's yeah really pumped. he's a little he wants uh, to see you react to it yeah <laughs> yeah we had an off day the other day and daniel and myself went over and started writing a new song with bob and listening to all the riffs he's been stocking up which are primo <laughs> he's got the goods he's got right now he's got three songs that i really like that he started um and then we have to siphon through some more things. Mm. But um, the dude it has some really incredible riffs, but yeah, it takes a second for him to kind of gather them uh, just because he's so busy with the kids and his business and stuff too. Um, but it kind of, he's the stru- he starts with the structure and then we tear it apart. And like Price of Agony, we rewrote as a whole three or four times, like start to finish and start it out basically as like a Lubasek cover. <laughs> so you can imagine the world that that song has been through. Um, I think 
it's uh, a little challenging just because you, you, at times I guess you'd love to have a little bit more of us all being together mm -hmm. to tear up stuff as a group, but we're getting a lot better at being able to communicate through it, whether it's through the internet or over the phone or whatever. And I don't think we're stressed anymore because this last record, we brought a bunch of stuff that didn't use like any of it. And yeah, this album's our most popular of... one ever. So it's... Yeah, so like Tuck said earlier, we, um, uh, I forgot the direction, or I forgot the uh, example I was going to use from him, but basically instead of going to the studio with a, a ton of full songs, we're, we're going to go in and uh, just have pieces because the producer that we worked with used basically the pieces versus the whole songs anyways. Mm -hmm. So I think Bob being at home and writing a bunch of riffs and um, you know, starting at that point, I think we'll go into this next record um, more comfortable. I feel like I know a few bands that have done this where like one member kind of st usually guitarists stay behind and work on stuff. And I always feel like it does produce better quality because he just you can kind of have that split mind thing happening. You guys can focus on being on the road and he can be like, where are we going to take this next? Like, mm -hmm. how, how can I surprise them when they get off the road and be like, let's do yeah. this? I think the one downfall to it is he's not seeing what kids are reacting like to. Like the return of it and stuff? Yeah, yeah like for us, there's definitely like these songs bang, these songs <laughs> don't necessarily bang. Like, they love from the older stuff they like this or that but from the older stuff they don't like this or that mm -hmm. from the new stuff this stuff is universal like yeah so we so, have to relay that you know. yeah we have to kind <laughs> of be came like, out hey, for a couple way. shows on this tour so they could, they could see it you know yeah. face to face with the kids but um, yeah we're seeing it every night mm -hmm. obviously different scenes are different but there's always those moments where it's like a song when you're in the studio you're like this one's okay and then the kids like really love it and you're like oh that's the one that they love the one that we were yeah. in the studio being like maybe we should cut this track and then it ends 100%. up being that fan favorite yeah. So I can see where you want to convey that. That's something I was just going over with the guys in Straight From The Path the other day. We were talking about their new record, and it was just like, I hate this song, but everyone that we show it to seems to love it. So I guess <laughs> this is going to be one that takes off, probably. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes that happens. There was a specific <laughs> scenario like that on our first record on Solid State. Mm -hmm. We didn't like it. And part of, part of the reason we didn't like it was because the process that it uh, went through to record it. It went through so many different versions, and even the finished version, we're like, God, like doesn't feel good anymore but they use that song out of all the record to release first you know what I mean yeah so. then, people, then people take two and you're like well at least all the work was worth something exactly <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah there is that thing where you're like you're working on something for so long and so many rewrites that you're just like I kind of hate this thing now like it's not the song's <laughs> that's, that's fault exactly what it was but I hate it now <laughs> I'm over it I just want to walk away mm -hmm. um, well that's good um, I don't really have anything else I, I do th I did want to just kind of comment that I I have to wonder what it's like for you guys when I saw the tour announcement for this rollout and you're, you know, have direct support from Norma Jean being such legends that they are. And then when you're on this Ink tour, you know, Howard Jones being, uh, and Light the Torch being below you guys, it's like you're, you hit that point now where you're, you've kind of risen above all these people. That you might have been called your peers in your band first launched, you know what I mean? And it has to be kind of an interesting moment for you guys to be like, oh, we're getting supported by these people that we used to listen to. And now that I'm, we're taking them out on tour and they're not taking us out on tour necessarily. Right. Is that like a strange kind of phenomenon to experience? I think it's exactly how you describe it. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's just like a holy shit. It's cool. It's cool. It really is. <laughs> Norman Jean's on stage right now, and then we're going to go out there? <laughs> yeah, it's a weird balance for our band, I think, as we um, are reaching a point where maybe at this we're having a little more success than we usually have had. Mm -hmm. Where, one, we're humbled by the fact that we're getting acts like that to play underneath us. I mean, obviously the Howard being underneath us has nothing to do with us. No, it's but it's amazing. Dumb luck, <laughs> but very cool. Um, but like with something like Norma Jean, that was uh, quite intentional. Yeah. Um, and it is a very interesting thing to socially navigate through the scene where it's like, well, I know that you've like toured ahead of us for X amount of years, but I don't know if that makes sense now. Yeah. And that is a very difficult conversation for everyone to have. The economics of um, all things. Because to a lot of other people, they could think, well, maybe this will really hurt my band because now I'm just going to keep playing under people. Mm. Where Corey and I, like, we had very open discussion about this where it's like, he's stoked. He's He knows he's playing in front of a lot of people that don't know who they are at the yeah. moment. And it's not that Norm, doesn't make him Norma Jean any less legendary. It just so happens that we have so many fans from this new album that we don't know. <laughs> so they're brand yeah. new to us. They're brand new to him. They're brand new to Left Behind. They're brand new to Currents. 
it's just part of it. Yeah, the chances yeah. are if they like our new record and they just found out about us, they're going to be hungry yeah. for more new music. That's why the yeah. Ice Nine Kills tour I'm so excited about is their newest record exploded like four times Crazy. what ours did. massive. Yeah. And so we know that all those people, not all of them, but most of them are going to be like newer fans that mm-hmm. picked up the new record of Ice Nine and love it. So they're probably young and they're not even young, just hungry for new music because yeah. obviously they just found out about Ice Nine. And so it's a good chance to make new fans. I feel as if the, when the goal stops being to play in front of new faces, you thus are stunting your own growth. Absolutely. So it's not, there's a, there has to be a balance between pride mm-hmm. and strategy. Yeah, it's where smart it's like, business strategy. Is there certain bands that we're like, man, like I know this tour would bang them. No, nah, I'm not going to play underneath you. Yeah, I'm sure there's a conversation or two where that would happen. But the goal is growth. Yeah. The goal is always growth. We've always, there's sure there's been times where, like, man, I don't want to play underneath that or whatever. Mm-hmm. We do it because it's necessary. Mm-hmm. And I think that um, a lot of people are starting to see that there is a new age of metalcore right now. There are a lot of really cool, young, new metalcore bands that are coming up that are kicking ass. Look at Knocked Loose. Mm-hmm. Five years ago, Knocked Loose didn't exist. <laughs> now Knocked Loose is the biggest metalcore band it's you know so we have when it comes to the hardcore metalcore crossover. Yeah. Taking Terror out, taking Casey Strain out, like things shift. Mm-hmm. It, I think it is smart, and I sometimes I envy younger music fans that are just that might love you guys and then discover Norma Jean and thinking like they get to go back and hear Bless the Martyr for the first time yeah. and being like, damn, that'd be amazing <laughs> to like have that moment yeah. again in your life. Yeah. So you're like, I hope that they do that deep dive. And it'll come full circle for them because then they can hear that and then they can hear like a band like Sanction and be like, oh, I get it. Like yeah. that was that was first, but this is now yeah, yeah. this is cool and that's cool, sick. You know, it, it all comes together full circle. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely the difference between, like, people that are, see things from the industry, business perspective, and then people that are just, like, uh, obnoxious genre fans that are like, why is Knock Loose so popular when the kids don't know who Half Heart is? And it's like, no, 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 no hold on. The, yeah. It goes both ways. Well, yeah, we yeah. had the biggest selling hardcore show in here. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that band. That used to draw 200, 300 kids in the Northeast. Yeah. And then now is, has the most legendary hardcore show of all time. Yeah, now they're deities in the genre, basically. Yeah. <laughs> well, Pathwind's other band was cool, too. They're Fiddlehead. so good. Yeah, Fiddlehead's sick. Uh, it's that problem of, like, you just, like, the magic. He's you only, just talented. Yeah. He's got that voice. Yeah. Uh, well, I thank you guys for taking the time to talk to me today. This has been fun. Of course, dude. It's been a long time. Uh, it was actually a conversation. It's kind of the goal. So I appreciate that. I always hate when I get like short answers and it's like, I tap my phone or something and it's like two minutes and ten seconds. Um, so this is actually... Um,